Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome back to another episode of uh, Raw Brook Art Teacher. Uh, today, we're going to be looking at this uh, this Van Gogh painting and uh, just taking a look at uh, the way that he painted it and uh, see if there's anything we can learn um, from that. So, this painting is called Wheat Fields. It's uh, it's a very famous painting by Vincent Van Gogh. And uh, he painted it about uh, a week before he died, uh, and um, and you can see it's a very expressive painting. He's um, painted the wheat fields very expressively, and uh, there's a lot of yellow down here. The, the The painting in real life is is very vibrant, and uh, it's it's very bright with the colors that he chose to uh, to to use. And uh, his his brother was uh, was a paint salesman, um, and so he was able to get a lot of these very 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 interesting paints that he used uh, but anyway um, the most striking part about the composition is um, is this uh, these crows that he's uh, that, he, that he's added there just uh, it's uh they're just flying away very directional and just one big sort of sort of triangular shape of crows um, it's uh, it's 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 almost like he uh, he took a brush and he just painted in those those this big sweep of crows there and uh, we can actually look at the painting today uh, without the crows, and uh, you can see that it's a it's a very different work of art, uh, very different. You can see the the wheat fields a lot clearer, but there's no uh, there there's there's no crows, which a lot of people really feel symbolize uh, Van Gogh's uh, suicide that he committed a, a week after painting this, and uh, so a lot of people feel like the crows are. Are very es essential to to, uh, to what makes this painting interesting. But uh, we can take this same logic and uh, well, let's look at another another work of art by Van Gogh, and um, this is Starry Night. As you can see, another very expressive painting. This is one of his very very most well known, and you can see it hanging in the uh, Museum of Modern Art if you ever uh, take a trip up to uh, New York, and uh, that's there on Manhattan Island. Mm, but uh, so as you can see, um, what we can do is we can actually um, add crows to this painting as well, uh, just to see just to see how the composition changes uh, when you add some crows. We can put some uh, some around the, that moon there, but uh, of course it's a it's a very dark painting, so almost to get the full effect you would need to turn them into doves. Um, so anyway, let's take a look at a painting by J.M.W. Turner. Um, this is a this is a naval battle that he's painted uh, with the 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 sun setting. Uh, of course, this never actually happened, but it's uh, it's just a painting that he has painted. Let's see what happens when when you add some crows to the painting. As you can see, that's uh, that's what happens when it, when you, when you put them in there. And uh, there's a lot of different shapes you can do. You can you can do like the classic sort of uh, that M shape. Or, uh, or you can make the the angle of, of your of your M a bit more more severe, like this one here. So, so, uh, so, so it almost becomes like like a like a McDonald's M. And of course, you can put them uh, further away in the sky to um, to make it look more like they're that's like a second layer of crows that's uh, higher up. Um, anyway, let's take a look at this uh, Monet painting. Uh, this is uh, this is his interpretation of wheat. Uh, it is uh, a bale of wheat. These are called wheat bales, I believe. And um, uh, now let's let's see what happens to this uh, very very impressionistic painting uh, when you uh, add crows. Um, so again, they're going off into the distance there and into the sunset. Um, uh, let's take a look at a Manet, not to be confused with Monet. Manet, very different painter. Uh, now, let's see, of course, some, some crows in there. And you, you don't have to paint a lot of crows. You can you just see just how two or three crows just, just makes a very, very striking difference to this painting. And, uh, and uh, how there's, there's almost this compositional triangular element that it now has going on. Now let's look at a John Constable painting, uh, a very I idyllic painting of the English countryside, and uh, there's some some horses down here with a. Um, it looks like they're trying to cross the stream uh, next to this uh, this windmill here, and um, well, we add some crows, and this one actually it can support quite a lot of crows, um, in this uh, up in that space there. Let's take a look at. Uh, something outside of Europe. Uh, this is a Hudson River Valley School painting, and uh, you've got your oxbow there, and uh, 
of course on the left it's it's raining and there is um there there's a fallen tree it's a uh, uh, very symbolic of, of the way the american frontier was conceived at the time and now here's what happens when you add the crows um it just it adds a lot of interest to um the, this upper right hand corner here which uh which previously the artist had left very blank for you um perhaps originally conceived as a resting place for your eyes but uh um, we can just see what what it looks like with the crows. Uh, let's look at a Bruegel the Elder painting. Okay, this is the, the Tower of Babel here, um, taking up much of the mid-ground. And uh, down in the lower left-hand corner, there are some people discussing something. Um, but there's not very much going on in the background, which is why when you add crows, it, it really gives you that, that heightened sense of distance. Uh, it really works well with the, um, the atmospheric perspective that, uh, Bruegel the Elder was going for. Um, and you can take this back as far as you want. Here's, here's a Titian painting with crows, and, uh, here's, um, here's a very early Renaissance painting, um, with crows. Uh, but uh, but anyway, now let's take a look at one of um, one of my students' artwork here. Uh, this comes from Nashi, or maybe that's Nashi. I can't quite tell down there. And um, you know, there, you can see there there is a bridge. There is a bridge um, and some palm trees, some palm trees, and uh, a boathouse as well. Um, this is for where people would store their boats. And there is what appears to be a bridge as well. And now as we come to the focal point of the image, which is the shrine here, you can see what, what Nashi has done uh, as added some birds, uh, some crows or perhaps another type of bird around the shrine. And as you can see, it, it really adds a lot of visual interest to this painting. It really, really draws your eye in. That's of course helped by this uh, palm tree here, almost acting like, like an arrow. Um, but you can really see uh, what a great job she's done. Fantastic work, Nashi. Um, top marks. Now, this is another painting that has come from one of my students, uh, Emily. Um, as you can see, she has painted some uh, some poppy flowers uh, growing in the desert there, as evidenced by this cabbage. And uh, there are some blue mountains in the background. But now, Emily, now what you can see is uh, that um, there aren't very many crows in this picture. Um, it's almost like um, there, are, there are no crows. So what you might want to think about in the future is uh, making the crows a bit more prominent. So uh, just just adding in, a, adding in a few crows here and there can, can really help you out when, when you're in a tight spot, when, when, you, when you've got all this, uh, this blank space at the, at the very top of your painting, as uh, you can just add crows and that'll just immediately just, just add some interest to, to your painting. Uh, now, this is a, a, a very interesting painting. It comes from Jennifer, um, and it is a painting of a face, and um, it is a, a very close-up painting. And um, she, Jennifer, you've done very well with the, with with the with your palette knife here. Um, you've, you've really done a lot of uh, of spreading around the colors, but um, it's just very hard to see. Um, where one even would put a crow in this picture because uh it's just so close up and we we don't really know very much about this girl other than her her face and her neutral expression um if we were pulled back a bit we could almost see uh see a landscape around her or maybe the environment that she finds herself in or uh what's causing her to look like this and um we just don't get that and henceforth there's no real place where you can add crows um, so maybe think about that for the future there, uh, Jennifer. Uh, okay, and, uh, our last painting, it comes from, uh, um, Gao Qi. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, uh, I did my best there. Um, but, uh, anyway, this is a, this is a very interesting, uh, this is a very interesting painting. Um, it's very abstract. Um, very abstract. It's... It's, it's, uh, I know, I've read a few books about abstract art. I don't, I don't really use it in my own practice. I'm more of a representational artist, but, uh, but it almost looks like this is a, this is a picture, a very close up picture of some paint marks on, on, on the canvas. It's, 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 it's very textural, this image. And, uh, 
and it looks like it's a close-up of, of a larger of a larger painting and um, um, we would almost have to sort of pull back a bit and sort of have a picture of of the whole thing to uh, to even determine whether or not uh, it's something that crows could be added to um, anyway well that about wraps it up for uh, for for this episode so um, be sure to leave a like comment and subscribe below and um, and, and, of course, uh, send me your artworks to rawbrookartteacher at gmail.com and, um, um, and watch out for the next video. Who knows? You could end up in the next critique.